everyone. So I'm editing this week's episode of the podcast that we recorded maybe three weeks ago. Uh, and I'm noticing there are some audio and video problems. Once again, I think it was the program we were using back then that we are no longer using now. Um, and that was the source of the problem the entire time. We have changed. Everything is different now. But this podcast was recorded a few weeks ago. So the problems kind of were there at that time. Uh, also, there's some empty space on the wall for the podcast. I don't know if you've noticed in like the background of my videos and stuff. So if you are an artist or, you know, you have a cool piece that you want to send over to me, let me know because I would love to put some work on this wall because it's kind of empty and I want to fill it up. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Noah's Nightmare Podcast. This week, I'm very excited because we're going to be talking scare acting. The entire episode is all going to be dedicated to scare acting. We're going to be talking to one of my friends who's going to come in and kind of share some of her experience doing scare acting. Uh, I have some experience with scare acting. I'm very excited to share all of that with you, especially with people who, you know, are thinking about maybe getting into scare acting or doing it for their first time this year. You know, some of our best advice and some things that we can kind of touch on. So if you are interested in that or you just want to hear kind of what it takes to be a scare actor, uh, listen up because we have some very good information coming right at you. Excited to introduce my friend Daniela. Uh, she worked with me at a horror themed escape room for a few years. So we've gotten very close. Uh, but Danny has done so many scare acting things that I feel like we need to just talk about them all. I feel like you're everywhere, <laughs> Danny. So let's start with how many years have you scare acted for and and where? Okay, so I think I started scare acting in 2018. I dabbled a little bit in Horror Nights, but I didn't stay there for the whole year. And then I joined the basement escape room in Silmar. And then I joined you at Zoe. Yes. <laughs> and then after that, I uh, started doing smaller little, like, haunt stuff. Uh, I was a part of like a bunch of friends haunts, uh, immersive theater events, and I did uh, 17th Door. I started doing 17th Door. This year would be my third year at 17th Door. Ooh. And then I did a couple, like, I work with Meyer to Meyer here and there. I've done, nice. like, a couple pop-ups for movies and stuff like that. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we're going to dive into that 17th Door because I feel like, I mean, with experience that I've had working at Scary Farm and then scare acting with you <laughs> at the escape room, like, you're kind of held in, like, a certain standard, but I feel like 17th Door is, like, way out there. It's, like, something yeah. completely different. So we're going to get into that in a second. Um, oh. But I let's, let's start off with this. Let's start off with this. For <laughs> somebody like, let, let's just, let's say, so... Scare acting is is crazy in yes. itself. It's like a, a complete beast that you have to learn how to tame. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like being a female in this industry is even harder. So talk about that. Do you feel like there are any struggles with, you know, being a female in this haunt industry and having like these really masculine and like, you know, deep voice, like growling characters that are kind of like these scary figures. And, and how, like, how do you combat that? How do you go as a female in the scare acting industry um, and, and do the thing? Like, how are you so successful in it doing all these events? Like what, what advice would you give to other females <laughs> looking to do scare acting? Honestly, like it is hard because I know when like my first time ever when I auditioned for Horror Nights, I remembered they were like, we mostly want like people over six feet and like stronger, like more built over six feet. Like I know a lot of haunts look for that most of the time, but mm -hmm. honestly, like learn a specific talent, learn like I know how to backwards crawl and like use your uh like teach yourself something like unique and interesting and they will want to use that like they'll be like oh she can backwards crawl like we can definitely use that add like a scary little character that will crawl at people 
or like if yeah. you can do cool voices, noises, anything like that. And then honestly, sometimes if you have like smaller stature or if you're shorter, you can hit up all of them. They are always going to need like someone who's a little kid or like mm-hmm. yeah. something like that. And they'll, they'll use you. They'll just add something unique. And that's what I did. I'm like, just look for what they kind of are like looking for and then add your own uniqueness to it and you'll be able to pretty much get in it's not too bad but i know it can be difficult because yeah they do a lot of the times look for like bigger like type yeah. yeah they're looking for a specific thing but i mean you saying you know unique it it's interesting because i've seen you do a ton of different things from you know working with me and playing both a feminine little girl character and then also (laughs) playing like the uncle robber and also seeing you play a victim character at the basement and seeing you play kind of like these scarier characters at 17th door you can like do it all so yeah i commend you on that because that's (laughs) like that's talent right there that is extreme talent uh but talking about unique uh Mm -hmm. you Scare at 17th door. Are you doing mm-hmm. that again this year? I am. Okay. And let's, let's get into that. I mean, I want to know, cause it differs from not scary farm. I can talk a little bit about my not scary farm experience, but I want to, I want to go into like the more extreme type of scare acting, like where you can touch guests physically and you can mm-hmm. get in their face and you can use props on them. Does that make it easier or harder to like, scare guests i feel like in a way it would make it easier because you can get right up and personal with them but at the same time i feel like it makes it harder because i feel like it's almost like now you have to worry about them trying to touch you back and trying to push you and you know do all these things so talk about that like is it easier is it harder do you feel like it even makes a difference Honestly, it can be 50-50 depending on the guest because if you have, like, yeah, it's going to add that extra scare factor of people being like, oh, my God, they can touch you here, Mm -hmm. they can uh, get in your face, all that, and you're like, cool, that adds an extra scare factor, but then you have the other types of guests who are going to be like, okay, well, if they can touch me, I'm going to touch them, and, like, people can get aggressive, so it really depends. I think it does make it a little easier to scare but at the same time, you have to be careful. You have to be more careful safety-wise. It makes it harder safety-wise, in my opinion. Because yeah. if you go to, like, Horror Nights, for example, or even Knots or, or anything like that where you can't really touch the guests, there's stricter rules and stuff like that, then you're like, okay, um, the guests pretty much know you can't really touch them. And as much as they will get scared, and you'll always have those guests everywhere, of course. Always. But if you're, like, breaking that barrier and touching them, and then they are that type of guest that is going to get aggressive or they're intoxicated or anything, then, yeah, that adds to your experience. Yeah. <laughs> and then it can get worse in that way. But scare-wise, like... Yeah, I would say it gets a little easier because you're like, you add that extra, like, little fear tactic and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, even working at Scary Farm for the year I worked at Scary Farm, um, (laughs) (laughs) just because I I love the Halloween season too much. There's so much to do that I'd rather do than scare act. Even though I love scare acting, I did it for years at the escape room. Um, And doing scary farm you always you do have those guests i feel like there was at least you know one or two that got very rowdy and hands-on every week at least you know like and some people were lucky enough to not have those guests at all and other people were you know not so lucky and had guests every night trying to harass them so yeah it is it is just kind of like making sure that you stand your ground and you you know run through all the safety precautions as a scare actor and and think about all the things you can do as a scare actor to kind of prevent that from happening i mean i had a guest try to choke me out during not scary farm oh my god yeah which is crazy i mean if you're first off if you're a guest who is even going to consider doing something like that please don't come to these events yeah Uh, you know security doesn't want to have to deal with you scare actors don't want to have to deal with you 
Mm -hmm. If you think you can't handle it or you think maybe after a couple drinks you're not going to be able to handle it, don't drink or don't come to these events. Don't be that person. I feel like we can both speak for a majority of scare actors when we say, like, don't be that person. Like, please don't be that guy. Yeah, it's never (laughs) fun. It's It's never fun for anyone involved. (laughs) Exactly. So with 17th Door, can you walk us through like a typical night at 17th Door? Actually, you know what? Let's let's backtrack. (laughs) Let's start with the audition process for 17th Door. Uh, Not Scary Farms audition process is fairly easy. You kind of apply online. They give you a date to come in. And then they start making you do all these like crazy stunts they're like act like you're a clown that's being filled up with razor blades and then you have to literally do it and then they see you and they kind of line you up and ask you where you want to be ask you if you like have a certain you know spot that you're gunning for and then they'll assign you based off of your performance and where you want to be and whatever uh is is 17th door like that is that how that works is it kind of the same is their audition process like a lot harder it's it's similar. It's very similar. I think it's uh, definitely more condensed. So there's going to be like way less of you in that audition um, so they can really get to see you. They try to pair up people that are auditioning for the first time with people that uh, already work there so that they feel more comfortable. They can see what uh, the people who already work there are doing and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's going to be more secluded uh, there's going to be, you know, a row of people watching you. They're going to ask you, like, improvise. They're going to give you, like, similar things. They're going to give you mm-hmm. those scenarios of, like, act like this, do this, pretend. And then they're going to make you do it on your own with people, without people. It's it's a quick it's a quick one. It's a pretty okay. quick one. Yeah. But they do ask you, like, in that short amount of time, like, do this scene, do this, do that. And then it'll go by really fast. And you're like, whoo. you're like uh it's over i didn't get to do this (laughs) yeah and then they they have little sections as well of like characters scare acting if you can do stilts they'll have you do a stilt section um and they have all that and they'll send you to do it uh depending on uh who wants to do what of course you the form itself has like a bunch of stuff written on it so that Mm -hmm. like it asks, like, are you able to do this? What are you more interested in? Stuff like that. So it's very, uh, I would say I, I really like the audition process because it feels very, very more like you're being seen for sure. Yeah. And yeah. it's not very crowded and mm-hmm. whatnot. But, yeah, it could. But I can see how it would definitely be a little bit more nerve wracking because you're like, okay, they're definitely watching me. <laughs> yeah. And whatnot. But. Uh, but yeah, it's very similar. Just, I would say more secluded and then they have the little extra little branches of stuff. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that goes back on you talking about having something unique that you can offer like a, a stilt position. Not everybody's going to come into that audition knowing how to walk on stilts or knowing how to, you know, handle certain things or do certain things. So it's always good to find your little niche of things to do and run with that and practice that and really rehearse that because that's something different that you can bring to the table. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, the audition process sounds kind of the same as Scary Farm. How, how was the audition process for Universal? For Universal, honestly, like literally the same. Like, <laughs> okay. So I feel like it's um, the same across the board for everybody. Yeah, it's kind of like gonna... come in, act like a fool. And yeah. we'll let you know where you're going to go next. <laughs> exactly. And then head out. Yeah. With, with Horror Nights, uh, they do uh, the whole cone process and everything where, like, if you touch the cone, like, that's a guess. Don't touch it. Like, scare mm. the cones, whatnot. And then it's, like, a way bigger group of people. Mm-hmm. And the thing that is so nerve-wracking about the Horror Nights one is you find out they're, like, in front of everyone if you're moving on or not. <laughs> and Ooh. it's so... You're like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So 17th Door is not like that. They don't tell you right then and there if you made it or not. No, you get a phone call, like, a week okay. later. So Knott's is kind of like universal. So Knott's, yeah. you do your audition, and then they let you know, like, all right, you go to costume, you go to costume, you go to yeah. costume. And then you get to costume, and then there's all these people in the costume area that are looking at you like, yeah, I think you can fit here. Can you um, try on this costume? Can you see what this is like? 
read this little piece of paper and look at this character. Do you think you can fit that? Do you think you can do that? So then yeah. you go there and they kind of like place you where they think you're going to fit. So, you know, that day almost for scary yeah. farm is like, you like, know, you made it or not that same mm-hmm. day you go in for the audition. And I feel like a majority of people who go in and try their hardest will make it. Yeah. So it's not hard to do. Uh, you just have to put your whole, you know, body into it, put all your energy exactly. into it. And make sure you're going full out. Like, this is something that you don't want to slack on. You want to be able to show the people on the panel that you are able to hold this energy throughout the night. You're doing things that are crazy and unique and different. So I think, I I mean, I think it's achievable for anybody who wants to do it and put their mind to it. I think it's very kind of, I won't say easy because it's not easy. It's easy to get the job, but then the job is hard. Exactly. You know, so yeah. I feel like a lot of people are kind of scared with like their auditions and stuff. Like, I, I don't think I'm going to get anything. I can't do yeah. a crazy voice. I can't whatever. But I think you'd be surprised with yourself if you get there and you see exactly. everybody else acting like a complete fool. It'll kind of make you, you know, loosen up and get into that space of like, oh, I can do that, too. You know, I can exactly. run around and do something crazy like that. Yeah, it's, it's, the audition process is not as bad as everyone always assumes it's going to be. Yeah, I think so too. And like you said, it's, it's a very welcoming community. Like they want to hire new people. They want more talent there. Just put your whole, like, put all that effort in and you like most likely will get it. It, It's just, it is very physically exhausting. It's a very physically demanding job to have yeah <laughs> whether you're at horror nights 17 door or not it's like all of it is all very physically demanding so you just have to be prepared to be doing that yeah so i mean talking about physically demanding let's go through a night uh mm-hmm. you get to 17 door you're hired you're in how does that work do they like assign you one role for the entire run of the season like, mm-hmm. I feel like that's how they do it at Knott's. When you're assigned one role, you're you're that the whole season. And then right. uh, during a night, you have an hour on and an hour off at Knott's. That was something new that they um, started doing, I think, back in 2018. Um, they started implementing that hour on, hour off. So you're in the maze for an hour, and then you're out of the maze for an hour while your other cast is in there doing their thing. And then you swap. And you do that a couple times a night. Uh, one of you is an opening shift. One of you is a closing shift. But how does that work at 17th Door? So you, I saw you saying no, that you're not assigned one no. role. So how does that work? Do they decide a different role for you every weekend? Is it different every night? Like, how is how's that playing out? It Honestly, it can be different every night. I know personally, like, you, so basically, when you get scheduled, you'll have, like, the week's schedule come in you'll see what day that you're scheduled for and it'll give you a call time and that call time it's pretty like it's a pretty general call time because there's like so many characters that could be in each call time like if you work field trip like you would usually have an earlier call time but you can be anyone really in field trip depending on the call time field trip is their extended experience so 17th door itself is the haunted attraction haunted walkthrough it's a maze you know you're fully immersed in it you're getting tased mm-hmm. you're getting water on you you're getting you know stuff all in your face there's Everything. bugs all over Crazy you rooms. so field trip is a separate ticket yes it is a okay. separate ticket you can also get it in a bundle so you have the field trip and 17th door and they make it a whole storyline it's a really fun time okay uh field trip honestly is so so fun uh it is an add-on experience you get in a van, they take you off site, and you have a <laughs> wild time. It's longer. Oh my goodness. It is longer than the actual 17th door itself. Um, and you get immersed. It is so fun. It's Ooh. like a whole immersive theater experience. Yeah, that's crazy. So for for a field trip, and I guess for 17th door too, mm-hmm. how long is like hair and makeup stuff? I feel like Everybody there looks so good. They always mm-hmm. have like airbrushed makeup. Their hair always oh, yeah. looks amazing. It always like 17th door. I like commend them on the makeup. They're not just like throwing people in masks and like calling it a day. Like I feel like they're kind of always on top of it. Even if you have some sort of mask, there's some sort of something also yeah. airbrushed on you or painted on you. Oh, so yeah. How, how's the process for that? Does it take long to get in hair and makeup? Like, do you have to get not there early? All. 
Not at all. Honestly, I it is so impressive what the ma- makeup artists can do at Seventeen Door. Like that was one of the things where I even before I worked there, I was like, wow, the makeup is so cool. Yeah. And then uh, they literally have a bunch of makeup artists like do an audition and they get these looks done in like barely even like ten minutes. Like Ooh. all of it is done. You sit in the chair, and then they call out your name. You sit in the chair, and then whatever you're getting done that night, they're like. Boom, 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 done. Like, it happened so fast. How many people like, would you wow. say, how many people would you say are, like, typically hired for a season at 17th Door, like, monster-wise? Um, just just monsters, because then I'm going to ask about makeup artists next. I would say there's about, like, like just rough. usually there ends up being, like, around 150, I believe. Okay, okay. And then makeup artists, how many of those? There's like, there's like 10. Ooh, oh, my <laughs> <They're> goodness. <like 10. laughs> oh, my gosh. So they're really just pumping people out. They are pumping people out. Yeah. Wow. They're yeah. so talented. Like the makeup artists there are so talented. And it's, I give them it's that. airbrush. It's they add prosthetics to some people. Yeah. They add like hand painted like stuff. I know the voodoos at uh, Field Trip, they have to be, most of them have to be hand painted. Yeah. And it. It was done so quickly, and it still looked so good. And, and it's like, a different Whoa. level because you're up close. Like, yeah, when you're up close to a scare actor and they're right in your face and you're standing with them throughout <laughs> a whole, you know, few minutes in a certain room, mm-hmm. you're really paying attention to what they look like. So you can't oh, yeah. skimp out on, you know, a bad mask or a bad makeup job. I feel like it's always exactly. on point. They're always like adding those little extra details that you don't normally get from the bigger theme parks. You don't get that from Universal. You don't really get that from Knott's. I mean, there are some amazingly talented uh, makeup artists at Knott's who do like just the most crazy looks and change up their look throughout the season, which is just so cool to see. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I feel like a lot of like the maze actors at Knott's and Universal are all kind of like masked characters. There's not many that are in makeup. So yeah, it is. It's cool to see that Seventeenth Door like does makeup for a majority of their people. It's like oh, crazy. Yeah. And then we have our costume castle that's literally run by uh, Isaac, who is the coolest person ever. And Isaac makes like they buy costumes, they make them, they like fix everything they have all the accessories ready like everything is the wigs all of it isaac has got you handled so when you come in you go to the costume castle and then you wait for your name to be called for makeup that's <laughs> crazy like, the talent with the costumes makeup all of it is crazy over there. yeah i'm sure i mean it's crazy everywhere i i like commend all these people for doing all this work that like guests see but it's often overlooked like no one's really thinking about like oh my gosh that costume looks so good or that makeup job looks so good yeah you're kind of so scared you're not paying attention but these people deserve so much credit because without them we would look just like normal people doing a normal (laughs) job but let's talk about now you're in hair and makeup it's been you know 15 20 minutes you you sat in the chair you got your makeup done you're in your costume do you go in right away? Do you go in when you want? Are you on a schedule? Do you have like someone to swap out with you? Is there like, like, how is that going to work out? I feel like it's, yeah. it's different and unique there because there are so many separate rooms throughout the whole thing. You're going through yeah. each of the 17 doors. You're going through exactly. all these certain rooms and like stopping and doing something in each one. So how does that work out? So there are people that get scheduled as what we call breakers. So okay. essentially you'll be scheduled and you're breaking like three different people. So it's like a rotation. So if you're not a breaker, you'll be in a room uh, for a bit and then you get a 10 minute break or so. And then you get like your full like lunch and then you get another 10 minutes. If they can fit in another 10 minutes, they'll fit in another 10 minutes. So that breaker is essentially just doing a rotation of like, okay, I'm going to, for example, I'm going to surveillance first. I'm going to give them their 10 minute break after surveillance. I'm going to go to Tumblr and I'm going to give two of the Tumblr clowns, like first one, then the second one, a break. And then I'm going to take my break and then I'm going to start doing lunches. So it's like a rotation, essentially, of just 
and so it you're works in there. Well. You're in there for a while until somebody comes to break you out. Yeah, yeah, it can feel like a while sometimes, but honestly, it's usually you get you get a pretty good amount of breaks. Okay. I know like Horror Nights had like the 45 45 rule where it's like 45 on 45 off. Mm-hmm. Um, but honestly, like if you get that like third round of 10s and stuff like that, like if it's a long night, like it's a, it, it's pretty good. Um but yeah, you can be in there for a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know what? That's the there. that's the fun of scare acting too. Exactly. Is like, it, it always flies by. You feel like, oh my gosh, it's going to be a long night. It's Saturday night. Mm-hmm. And when I worked at Scary Farm, I opened the depths maze. And I mm-hmm. remember like our maze is either going to bomb and no one's going to like it or it's going to be like the best thing this year. So yeah. We had people walk through it and then we started hearing feedback from all the media people who had walked through it like oh my gosh that maze is so amazing and whatever it was and yeah. then it kind of like got us thinking like oh on these saturday nights we're gonna be here for a long time and i was yeah. the closing shift and so anybody who got into your line before one or two a.m or whatever it is that they closed was allowed to go through it so sometimes yeah. we were there till three you know three thirty finishing out this line of people um but it does it goes so fast i feel like yeah you you think to yourself like oh my gosh we're gonna be here all night but then it goes quick because you're getting all these scares you're like interacting with these people you're seeing things that like you never see you know done out in the wild before like you're seeing like people pee their pants and fall on the floor and literally you know you're hearing all sorts of things and it's cool and you're hearing all the stories from your you know, other scare actors of like, oh, did you see this lady? And it's like, oh my gosh, I just scared her. And then when you (laughs) turn the corner, you scared her. And it was like so perfect. So it's, it's cool to just kind of have those moments of like these very unique scares and a lot of things to kind of quickly pass the time. Um, Yeah. Yeah. But that sounds cool. I mean, 17th door is definitely unique and different in its own way. Um, And we're going to, I have a couple more questions that I'm going to ask you (laughs) right after this break. So we will be right back and I will continue on talking with Daniela. And we're going to get some advice from Danny about, you know, what you need to have for scare acting. What are some essentials? What are things you should like be prepared for? So come right back and we will talk about all of that. Your next vacation deserves to be breathtaking. Your family and friends deserve a trip to make memories that'll last a lifetime. You deserve the best service in the travel game. That's where I step in. Whether your next vacation be catching the beautiful sunset from the tropical beaches of Hawaii, taking a relaxing cruise to the gorgeous glaciers in Alaska, an all-inclusive resort on a white sand beach in the Bahamas, a trip with fun and adventure at a universal resort in Orlando or LA, or possibly a trip with Mickey and friends in Florida or Anaheim. I'll answer all your questions and work with you every step of the way during your entire vacation. Head over to disnoaland.com under the Disnoaland travel section and request a quote today because you deserve the trip. So we are back with Daniela. We have a couple more things to talk about before we get into advice to give a scare actor or somebody looking forward to scare acting, maybe somebody who's doing it for their first time this year. Um, Let's talk really quickly about 17th Door. What makes it unique? What's what's different? Why should we come to 17th Door this year uh, over, you know, LA Hayride or over Scary Farm or what what's different? What are you guys offering that's different than everything else? Yeah, honestly, I think 17th Door is very different because of you don't have just, like, pop-up scares or people just running around scaring you. You have, like, a lot of, like, one-on-one interactions with your group alone. You have, Mm -hmm. like, these rooms you're going into where you're going to be just in that room, like, your group, where it's going to be, like, a whole thing happens in that room, and you're in it for, like, a minute or so, and then you move on to the next one. Field trip, like I said, it's, like, a whole immersive theater experience. Scare actor-wise, even, like, 
uh, you're doing a lot of improv. You're doing like scenes, like full on scenes, and you're staying with the guests for long periods of time. Like it's really fun, and you can add like the uh, guest wise, like it adds like a lot of care for certain characters. Mm. You get into the storyline. You feel yeah. very. It's very immersive. I know when I first went through. 17th door you know i was terrified i was like oh my god it's extreme <laughs> i'm scared of pain you can't yeah. get a mercy pendant so you don't get tased and they don't put bugs on you or anything Good like you know. that um and i would get a mercy pendant and i would go and i did the whole 17th door and then i did field trip when field trip started and i was literally mind blown i was like <laughs> I did field trip. I was like, yeah, I want to work here. <laughs> and it is very, it is so like, okay, I am in this situation right now. Oh my God. What do I do? Oh God. And yeah. it's like that the whole time. It's, yeah. it's a fun time. That sounds awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. if I wasn't so scared of bugs and getting shocked by my fellow <laughs> castmates, I would work there. But I have a feeling everybody would target everybody kind of <laughs> as a joke and word Those would get around watchers. quickly that I hate bugs. And then I would have cockroaches in my bag every night or something. I just, oh my I could see it now. <laughs> I could see it now. Um, yeah. But I will say last time I was there and doing the experience, we, I, I did it with you. It was before you worked yes. there. I think it was the year before you started working there. We yes, did it together. So fun. <laughs> and we were actually chased out of the building by a camera crew. What was that yeah. all about? Do you guys record guest experiences or what, what's the camera crew? It was like a full on, yeah. someone with a big camera. They had, you know, someone with a boom mic and standing and lights. I was like, what are we, are we on punked? Like what is happening? Yeah, no, same. Uh, so 17 door does have a reality show. It's called spook show 17. Season one is already out. It's on, um, to me, Amazon, like the whole shebang. Mm. Uh, and so they're, they record like guest reactions for it in the show itself. They tell you about how some of the rooms were made, like funny, like interactions with guests and also with uh, cast members. Like there's a lot of, you learn a lot about certain people. You get <laughs> to learn a lot about the owners, the crew. Like it, it's a funny show. It's really funny. So now that it's that. its own show, are you guys like getting recognized from the show of people that are coming and like, oh my gosh, we saw you on the show. Like, yeah. you're that person who stabbed this person in the back that one time. <laughs> like, are I you know, guys getting that? I know the owners definitely uh, get recognized pretty. I know. Okay. So last year during auditions, we had a lot of people who auditioned because they watched the show. And oh. then. A funny story, me and my boyfriend, we went to Florida and we did an escape room out there called the Bureau. They're uh -huh. great. We met some of the people there and they were like, because uh, my boyfriend is in season one of okay. Spook Show 17. And they were like, we knew you looked familiar. Like, we love Spook Show. I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> All the way out in Florida. Oh, my yeah. goodness. 17th Door has got that reach. Yeah, they were they were so hyped. And they were like, we want to come out there and do it. Like, it seems like <laughs> so much fun. And it, it's, it's a funny show. It's definitely funny. Um, it really, it shows you, like, what Robbie does it shows you what robbie and heather go through a lot and they're the heather owners goes, robbie and heather yeah. are the owners okay yes they are robbie and heather are the owners it shows you how they go through like the building process what the crew goes through they show you the whole crew like you get to meet them all see yeah. the whole shebang happen and then it also takes you through like the season of like all right now we're starting with auditions and then this is how the season's going. This oh. is how we interact with our cast members. And it's crazy. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> that, I was going to say, that's interesting because there's not a lot of shows out there that are horror specific besides, you know, yeah. you got your like ghost shows, like ghost adventures yeah. and ghost hunters. And then you have things like um, the Boulay brothers, Dragula, which is kind mm -hmm. of more of like an exaggerated, you know, ex extended version of horror but you don't really ever have these haunts showing what it takes to get from nothing to a full-blown haunt and being exactly. successful so that's interesting to hear because you don't have anything like that out you don't have people 
sharing their story like that. And I feel like one that would be very interesting to hear from would be Fear Farm uh, when they yeah. started in Feeling. I feel like I talk about Fear Farm every podcast episode <laughs> because I love Fear Farm. But them starting in Feeling in their front yard and doing their thing to now moving to Corona and having a ginormous, you know, paintball or whatever it is battle that you can do yeah. this year. It's, it's crazy. Like, I feel like a lot of these haunts should start talking more about that kind of stuff and showing you know, what it takes to get there and showing, you know, what they do different. And I think that's cool. Even if it's a YouTube series, I think it'd be so yeah. fun to just kind of follow along with. So that's something unique that you I guys agree. are doing. Um, yeah, I agree. It's it's a fun time. And you learn a lot about the haunted self and yeah. like, the people. And then, yeah, and all those haunts, especially Fear Farm. I haven't had a chance to do it yet. But oh, this I've year, I'm dragging you there. Spirit. Okay, yes. This year, I'm I, dragging you there. I yes. want to go so bad. Okay, They're we're so doing good it. at Midsummer Scream. So we're good. doing it. Let's talk about the funniest or craziest story you have as a scare actor. I mean, there's there's tons that I can go through just scare acting for one season, and then tons that I can go through at the escape room too. When we would scare act those people oh there, God, oh my yeah. goodness, some of those people were <laughs> hilarious. Oh we have God, so yeah. many stories of things. Uh, but let's let's walk through yours. It doesn't have to be at Seventeen Door. It could literally be anywhere. It can be anywhere you've worked. Just one of the funniest or craziest stories that you've had from a guest. Oh man. Okay. What, one of the craziest things that I've seen, <laughs> um, I remember while, while I was working at the basement escape room, I was scaring in the study, which is the scariest room there. I am, this crazy like blind and deaf maid I look horrifying um I started wrapping my head so I look kind of like a silent hill nurse type of ordeal <laughs> That's awesome. um there was this group I had they were so so terrified that um they basically I I scared them in the bedroom scene that we have and they completely jumped over the bed, hit the chandelier, fell on the <laughs> ground, and they they were like, I know damn well you're not coming anywhere near me, and then <laughs> ran for it, and one of the girls was talking about how she was like, I just peed a little bit. I just peed a little bit. <laughs> Those are always and the best. Then, I know I I love when they <laughs> when they do that. But then she fully like peed. <laughs> like you had to like get a mop like she peed her pants and like you see it get dark <laughs> in her pants and you're and i was like oh my god like, and you're over here playing this blind nun like yeah. i can't look at that but i'm seeing and it I was but like, i can't see it <laughs> literally i was like oh my god what do, what do i do <laughs> oh my gosh that's insane and, and the girl was like I don't care that you're pissing. Like we gotta get away from her. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay, well, at least I'm scary, I guess. But then for like time to clean up. <laughs> I mean, if you've ever done that room at the basement, anybody who's listening, if you've ever been to the basement in Silmar, uh, you know that the bed in that room is big. Yeah. To jump oh, over yeah. that thing is like yeah. that's impressive because that bed is huge. It's like a full freaking king size bed in there like it's that's crazy. insane it so, is I mean, crazy you must be good at what you do to get people to jump like that i mean i, I <laughs> i've been scared by danny um a few times i don't know if i've ever scared you probably not but oh you have you have i would say, <laughs> I, I would say yeah i mean we have so many stories working at the escape room uh together that are just so crazy there's so many funny people that come in here and do like Things that you would just never expect. I swear to you, yeah. I have seen every amount of pee and blood and mm -hmm. tears and literally everything. I have seen oh, it yeah. all. People have gone to our escape room that literally sit in the corner the whole time and are like, we're not moving. We're yeah. not doing anything. I'm not going <laughs> anywhere. And then you go in there as the actor, like trying to scare them either out of the escape room or away from the corner. So they start doing yeah. things. And then it doesn't work. And then you have to go in there as an actor and be like, all right, like, I won't scare you. And then, yes. then it like just breaks the whole <laughs> immersion of the thing. So I don't know. It's, it's crazy. There are so many fun stories and I just it's love so hearing from each scare actor and like 
asking them about their funniest or craziest thing because everybody has a story. If you've oh, ever yeah. scare acted anywhere, you know, you just, you have a story. Uh, oh, so yeah. let's talk into, let's get into the best advice you can give somebody mm-hmm. looking into scare acting. Maybe they're scare acting for their first year this year. Maybe they want to audition for something this year or um, are going to consider maybe doing it next year. What's your best advice for somebody looking to get into that? Honestly, I always say just go for it because you'll never know if you really like it. Like if you don't like it, you know, you could always leave. But if I always say go for it, it is something new. It is something fun. It's one of those jobs where you're like, this is one of those fun jobs where I get to have a good time and do what I need to do and go for it. Just be physically ready to go for it and just like, let yourself go. I know it's going to be hard because you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to feel silly doing this or it's going to be weird to act like this. Just let it all go. Everyone is there for the same thing. <laughs> like, And the people watching you, they've seen it. Like, Let it go. Get crazy. Get weird. Do the craziest things you want to do. And yeah. no one's going to judge you for it. You're going to have a great time. And, and just it's such like go a... For it a loving and supportive community too. I would say between scare yeah. actors and guests, you know, walking around midsummer scream. That's like one of the, one of those places that you feel like, Oh my gosh, there's just so much love and support in here yeah. for all things, Halloween and horror. And like that same kind of love and support pours across all the, in, all the events that are going on uh, with the exception <laughs> of the one or two, you know, bad apples in the group that got a little drunk or think they can impress their girlfriends or boyfriends or yeah. whatever and do something stupid. But I mean, it, it's always cool to see that, that support from everybody and kind of like get to see, you know, these reactions of people throughout the haunt season. It's very rewarding. I would say it when is, you're like yeah. getting into scare acting and doing it and then like completing a whole season is like, I did that. Oh my goodness. Like, okay, that was cool. Like, (laughs) you know, I'll do it again or maybe I'll move somewhere else next year or exactly, you know, whatever it may be. But I mean, best advice I could give somebody is probably just like, like you're saying, just go for it. Don't be afraid. (laughs) Um, It's definitely something that's different and unique and you'll learn after the first week or two, what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Um, that I mean, that's that's like the best advice that I can give somebody that's it's trying true. to get into it. But yeah, let's get into must haves as a scare actor. What are some mm-hmm. things you always have to have with you when you're scare acting? I know for me at Scary Farm, I always had to have like cough drops because my voice would always go. Mm-hmm. Um, I would always have to have deodorant because I'm constantly putting that on. Yes. I wore a mask <laughs> at Scary Farm. So I always had baby powder to throw in the mask to like soak yeah. up all the sweat. Uh, waters for sure, something you mm-hmm. always want to have. What's stuff that you want to have as a scare actor, regardless where it is? Yeah, I would say those are pretty important. Deodorant, water, cough drops. Um, I always bring, like, some clear eyes or, like, some eye drops as well because you never know, especially with masks or if there's paint, glitter, anything on the mask. It can get all up in your eyes. They can get very irritated. I know my eyes always get irritated. Yeah. Um bring like i would always say bring some band-aids bring uh some advil like ibuprofen advil and also if you are in a place that has like a bring your own shoes type of thing bring some options because you never know when like you're gonna bring that wrong pair of shoes that you're like i just bought these like they're supposed to be comfy but they're Mm -hmm. not and they're not (laughs) yeah and bring like an extra pair of clothes you're gonna be like so sweaty. <laughs> True. You're going to be so sweaty. Snacks, too. Always a good yeah, thing to have. Because you're going to need to, like, you know, rejuvenate your energy throughout the night as exactly. you're using it. It's always good to, like, have a little pick-me-up. I, like, I mean, I don't normally drink energy drinks, but when I would scare at knots, I would have one almost every night. And, yeah. And bring that because that kind of, like, would get everything going. But Oh, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, must-haves kind of are the same across the board, regardless yeah. if you're scare acting at 17th Door or if you're scare acting at, you know, L.A. Haunted Hayride. I feel like it's kind of the same. You want to have the same stuff. You want to just always make sure you're hydrated and smelling good. Yes. You don't want to be the person that everybody's like, ooh, yeah, don't oh. go scare with them. I don't want to go in that yeah. room because, 
Ooh. the actor's smelly. Oh, God. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want to be that guy. So bring some yeah. deodorant. Bring some cologne, perfume, cologne, yeah, perfume mist, whatever, whatever you need Whatever you have. <laughs> um, and trust me, some of these costumes don't even really get washed every night. They, they get washed maybe once a week, if even that. So if you have one bad night where you smell, you're sticking with that smell the entire time. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I, I don't know. It's it's crazy. That's like the best advice and and must-haves I can give to anybody looking to scare mm-hmm. act. Yeah. All right. Safety well, and smelling good. <laughs> exactly. That's like the best the best advice we can give you. Mm-hmm. But thank you again, Danny, for joining thank me today. You. Uh, if you guys... Want to check out Danny? Where can we find you? What what's what are some things you're doing besides Seventeenth Door? Are you doing anything else? Are you scaring anywhere? Are you doing anything right now? As of right now, I'm just doing Seventeenth Door, but you know cool. things can always change. Yeah. Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram at Danny Gallenbor, that's where I post everything about it. But <laughs> <laughs> that's about that's about it as of right now. Okay, cool. I'm very excited. Hopefully, I can make it out to Seventeenth Door this year and check you yes. out. Yes. Because- I've yet to see you in that position, but I'm just like psyching myself out. I'm so scared because I'm just always terrified. And then I'm like, Danny's going to work there. And then she's going to tell everybody to target me. And then I'm going to no. be a target every night. So <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm always psyching myself out. But this year no, I will get out there so and, fun. and see you. That is the alarm, which means the nightmare is over. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this week's episode of Noah's Nightmare Podcast. Thank you again, Danny, for being here and talking all things scare acting. If you want to follow me, you can follow me at Disnoaland on Instagram. Subscribe right here on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube or check me out on Spotify under Noah's Nightmare Podcast. I will see you guys all again next week when the nightmare continues. Bye. Bye.